This video will demonstrate a procedure for programmed subcellular detachment from substrates. Here is an example of an electrode array for cell detachment experiments. Each electrode can be triggered for programmed release separately. The gold film is essentially transparent, no more than 40 nanometers thick, so that the cells can be seen in phase contrast microscopy. In this example, the Teflon chamber serves as both an electrochemical cell and a culture dish. The chamber consists of a platinum counter electrode and a chloridized silver reference electrode. The working electrode is created by connecting the electrode array to the gold pins, which are connected to these 24 wires. The electrode is held in place by this metal plate. Once the device is assembled, functionalize the gold electrodes with a short peptide sequence, an RGD terminated thiol. Make sure that the silver wire reference and platinum wire counter electrodes do not touch the RGD thiol solution, otherwise the thiol molecules will contaminate the electrode. Incubate the assembly for at least two hours in the dark. After incubation, take the device apart Rinse thoroughly with ethanol and dry with nitrogen gas. Reassemble it with a new O ring. Add enough phosphate buffer solution to submerge the working electrodes and the tips of the reference and counter electrodes. Connect the device to a potentiostat and verify that the RGD terminated thiol is binding to the gold surface by measuring a current voltage curve of a single electrode. Rinse the device with phosphate buffer. Now the device is ready for an experiment. Trypsinize 3T3 fibroblast cells in a culture flask. Incubate the cells for 10 minutes. Pass the cells into another culture dish and add enough serum containing media to quench the reaction of trypsin. Add cells to the device and plate the assembly into a humidified incubator for at least four hours. After incubation, add fresh media so that the counter electrodes and reference electrodes are in contact with the media. Place the device into a microscope within a live cell chamber. Adjust the microscope to the desired magnification and locate a polarized cell spanning multiple electrodes. Connect the release electrode to the working electrode of the potentiostat. Set the potentiostat to apply negative 1.3 volts. The pulse duration may vary from 5 to 50 milliseconds. Here is the result of a subcellular programmed release using a 3T3 fibroblast cell. At time zero, the cell clearly terminates on the release electrode. After an induction period, the cell contracts quickly. The contraction is measured and plotted as normalized cell contraction versus time. From the analysis, we obtain the characteristic induction time and contraction time. Here is an experiment combining programmed cell release with immunofluorescence microscopy. This technique can be used to show the location of subcellular components before or after release. In this example, the actin filaments are shown in red, the focal adhesion protein vinculin is shown in green, and the cell nucleus is shown in blue. In this experiment, we incubate the cells with a molecular inhibitor of myosin-2, the drug blebistatin. These results show a large increase in both the induction and contraction time. This last experiment uses real-time live cell imaging of fluorescently labeled proteins. The cells have been transfected to visualize the actin filaments present in the cell anchor points or focal adhesions. This movie shows that the focal adhesions disappear during the induction time prior to the onset of cell contraction. This experiment demonstrated programmed subcellular detachment of cells from substrates. 
we fabricated an electrode array consisting of a thin gold pattern on a glass slide and functionalized it with chemically conjugated RGD terminated thiols. 3T3 cells were plated on the electrode array and spread across the surface. Adhesion receptors on the cell bound to the peptide sequence that is tethered to the gold. By signaling the release of RGD terminated thiols, we triggered the subcellular detachment of cells. Results obtained show quantitative analysis of the dynamics of cell detachment. In combination with immunofluorescence microscopy, pharmacological inhibition studies, and real-time live cell imaging, this technique can be used to investigate the cascade of events associated with cell detachment.